爸爸。Well done, Bikin. Two ounces over, Mr. Bimstow. It's all right, but can it mostly bone? <laughs> oh. <laughs> New Zealand lamb, fifteen and ninepence. Please, Amy. <laughs> Robbery, that's what it is. Pitkin, how many more times do I have to tell you we're not here to give all the dogs of the neighbourhood free meat? It was mostly bone, Mr. Grimsdale. The next time a dog comes into this shop, I'll, I'll deal with it. It means he's going to put it in his sausage meat. You're not suggesting that Mr. Grimsdale uses dog meat in his county sausages now, are you? Here, Mr. Grimsdale. Show him your gold watch and chain. From the Association of Midland Family Butchers and Poulterers. First prize. First prize for quality and hygiene. It's my proudest possession, Mrs. Cutforth. Oh, yes, that's nice. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Pitkin. Next, please. I'll have a pound of potatoes, two tins of sardines, and a half hundredweight of coal. 
Mr. Grinthel, what might I ask is the time by your gold watch and chain? One o'clock, Pitkin. Oh, yes, of course. Early closing, isn't it? Seconds are ticking away, but can I don't know. Yes, I can hear them. How long will the ambulance be? Oh, uh, about 18 feet, Mr. Grimstow.
he's gone. Oh, no. If the inspection goes off well, Matron, we could expect a handsome donation for the new children's sunshine holiday home. We're still 20,000 pounds short of our target. Lady Brinkley signed bigger checks than that, Matron. Say, Mr. Grimthouse's qualities go watched in his chain. Lady Brinkley. <laughs> I do come this way. Uh, before we start the inspection, one pleasant little formality. A please, sir. Are they lovely? Yes, isn't it? Uh, shall we? Oh, yes, of course. Look, how long do you think it'll be oh, before don't he... worry. As soon as a porter is available, Mr. Grimsale will be taken to casualty. Oh, I don't mind taking him to casualty. Comfy, Mr. Grimsdale. Oh, I'm sinking fast, Pitkin. Oh. I can hear the angels singing. I can't hear them. You're not so near to them as I am, are you, Pitkin? Oh, don't worry, Mr. Grimsdale. I'll get a porter myself. our patients on the road to recovery. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Grimsdale, a bit of hold up, but don't worry. I'll soon have been casualty. Oh, my dear lady, think of what has happened to you, my dear. So this sorry. is really a yes. dreadful thing. You're not hurt. Oh, Maitland, oh, look after Lady Brinkley. Pick up the power. Oh. I must go. Oh, excuse oh. me. Oh. I want him. My dear Lady Brinkley, I'm most terribly sorry. What can I do to make amends? A glass of brandy, perhaps, oh, in my sanctuary? Yes, I want... I want to go home, get my car. Lady Brinkley's car, I do understand. Perhaps tomorrow? Oh, no, that would be quite impossible. We will be very honoured. Oh, yes. oh, very well. <laughs> Thank you, Lady Brinkley. Thank you, Lady Brinkley. Can I stay in there with him? No. The surgeon says you're putting him off. Now, don't worry, Mr. Pitkin. It's quite a simple matter. Cheer up. Now, look, you go along to the waiting room, and if there's any news, I'll let you know. Thank you very much. Mr. Griff, Mr. Hell. Here. How did they get... He didn't, Mr. Grimms. Oh, Mr. Grimms. Oh, it must have been... That's great. enough, Pitkin. Sufficient to say we're extremely uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know what you think, but I think you've been snatched from death's door, Mr. Grimms. I haven't On the very threshold, Pitkin. A miracle, Mr. Grimms, now? A miracle. A miracle, Pitkin. A miracle? A miracle. A miracle. How long do you make your be here, Mr. Grimms, now? Oh, probably months. I'm still on the danger list, you know. I shall have to lie very still for a month, and then after that, it all depends on the doctor. The doctor said you can go out tomorrow, Mr. Grimsdale. Well, I shall let him rest now. Pitkin, take my watch. Oh, can I, Mr. Grimsdale? And lock it up in the safe. Yes, Mr. Grimsdale. You can rely on me. Here. I can wear it in the daytime, can't I, Mr. Grimsdale? Mr. Grimsdale. You don't tell us! Very fortunate to have a second chance with Lady Brinkley. So let's make sure nothing goes wrong this time. Hey, take it easy. What are you doing? How kind of you to come. Oh, please, do mind. Excuse me, please. Do please. A lady, uh... Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> I, uh... Oh. Oh. What? Ah. <clears throat> I really must apologize for this little spot of bother. Please, don't worry. Oh, no one's been out, haven't they? Go away. Please, Lady Wrigley. And it's marvelous. Mr. Grimsdale. Well, you look wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I feel wonderful, Pitkin. <laughs> it's a miracle. miracle. <laughs> Performed by a doctor dedicated to the cause of suffering humanity. Oh, oh the way you say it. Say what? Well, that, that suffering bit, whatever it was you said. Why? Oh, 
dedicated to the cause of suffering humanity. That's what we're going to be, Pitkin, to show our gratitude for my amazing recovery. Dedicated to the cause of suffering humanity. Here, Mr. Grimsdale, we've had, well, a sort of a call, haven't we? We have that, Pitkin. We have that. Come on! Oh! oh. oh. What about it, Mr. Grimsdale? What about what? It's a call we've had. I know. Well, look at the way you slice our meat and saw through bone and, and make all those cuts and all that. Well, you, you could be a surgeon. That's feasible. A surgeon, yes. Well, you'd be the best surgeon in the whole world. Oh, don't exaggerate, Pitkin. I'd probably be no better than the rest of them. Oh. <laughs> all right. Look, I'll get dressed. You run along to the governor and fix up a date for us to enrol as students. Us? You mean me as well? Yes, of course. Even surgeons have assistants. Yeah, of course. For sharpening up the knives and, and swabbing up all the pools of blood and all that. <laughs> Hello, surgical ward. No doctor. You haven't arrived. Oh, nurse. Oh, um, excuse me. Now, now, I want to fix up a date. You see. Shh. How about him? Back door of the hostel. Oh no. Oh, no, no, no. You misunderstand me. See, oh, no, I don't. You men are all alike. <laughs> <laughs> no, here. Are you here to philander? Or can I persuade you to join your fellow students in the study of dentistry? Study? Here? Well, that's just what I want to do, study. Well, for heaven's sake, man, come along. What is your name? Um, Pitkin, sir. Well, Pitkin, I must insist that you control your excessive libido towards the ladies. Yeah. <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen. Check your equipment. Send them in. This way, please. Crankshaw won't tolerate students associating with women. So, uh, keep away from them, hmm? Oh, I will. <laughs> you're a woman. And you're pretty. So you'll have to find another chair. I will not. But you'll have to. Oh, Crankshaw won't tolerate students. I have it. been waiting here an hour. Oh, I can't help that. You're not going to get me into trouble. Come on, up it. I will do no such thing. Now, look, miss. I'm not going to get slung out. Now, I'm in. Come on. Now, come on. Oh, come on, in. Come on, out. Come on. Come on, out. Out of it. Pick it. You imbecile. You sex maniac. Bet, yes. Bet, Bet, look after this lady, will you? Certainly. Mr. Crenshaw, Sir Hector would like to see you as soon as possible. Yes, 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 all right. Please accept my apologies. Oh. Pitkin! This is your last chance, Pitkin. Your very last chance. Take over that chair.
you're, uh, you're new here, aren't you? First time. <laughs> Let's just get him up. Huh? Now, you do everything I do. Rinse him out with this, and spit into the bowl. to the dental clinic. If I may say so, the finest in Europe. We have all the very latest equipment here. The chairs are particularly comfortable. You've done it most beautifully. Thank you. Please. There. That didn't hurt, did it? This is the first time I've voluntarily sat in a dentist's chair. There. That didn't hurt, did it? No. You? You? Lord Hector, I have been looking all over the place for you. You see, me and Mr. Grimsdale, we've had the call. So... Get out and never come back. You're banned from this hospital for all time. Banned. Banned? banned. But I've been helping suffering humanity. Oh, oh. Get out and never come back. Get him out. Out! <laughs> Shh. 
Don't give me away. John. Hello. What's your name? Aren't you going to tell me? Oh, of course, I know, really. It's Lindy, isn't it? Lindy Walker. But I'd like to hear you say it. She seems to be making no headway at all. None. Quite the reverse, in fact. She hasn't spoken or smiled or shown any interest at all? No, Doctor. And I'm afraid we'll just have to wait. Must we wait? Can't we do something now? I'm sorry, Doctor. Oh, that's all right, Nurse. Shock isn't easy to treat. When Lindy lost both her parents in that plane crash, she lost the only effective cure in the world, love. Then there's nothing we can do? Very little, except watch her carefully and hope that something gives her back the will to live. That's it. Funny note. When you, when you didn't give me away just now, oh, I was, I was really happy. I could see. Well, I, I, I thought, well, perhaps you liked me. <laughs> but, but it's, it, it's really only because you didn't want to talk, isn't it? <laughs> you are. Know, I am. I, um, I, I want to go. Lindy, uh, um, look, look, my, my name's Mr. Pickin. Um, we, you, you, you haven't got anyone to kiss you goodnight or anything, have you? Well, I, well, far, far be it from me to push myself forward, but, but, um, well... What do you reckon? Well, of course, if, 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 you, if you can't talk, then <laughs> you can't say no, can you? <laughs> so, um... Will you, 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 you ready, then? Uh... in the way. Oh. <laughs> now we are friends, aren't we? Oh, I, I've got a... Oh, no, I must just say, because we've got so much time. obviously don't realize, but you've just done something wonderful. Me? Hmm. You must have a gift. Oh, no. No, no, no. I don't want anything. Me and Mr. Grimes, now we do it for nothing. See, well, I mean, we've had the call. Of course, naturally, that is stronger than I have. And you see, he's more interested in going in for the cutting upside. I beg your pardon. Surgery. Well, you will come and see Lindy again, won't you? Well, will be all right. I mean, can I come? What, what can I have permission? Of course you can. Just ask for Nurse Haskell. Yeah, Nurse Haskell. I promise you will. Oh, well, yeah, I, I, I promise. 
Oh. <laughs> what about your watch? Oh, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll collect it, but next time. All right. We'll take care of it for you. And I promise Lady Ripley he will be reprimanded in no uncertain manner. in the safe, lad. Oh, well, not what you might term um, in the safe itself. Pitkin, what have you done with my watch? Oh, well, see, there was this little girl in the children's board named Melinda, and she wasn't very well. You haven't given my watch to a child to play with. Go and get it back at once. I can't. The governor's banned me from the hospital forever. It was. But it's all right, you see. I'll fix it with Nurse Haskell. She's given me permission to come in. Where is she? Where is the governor? Mm. A few judicious words from me, and that's that... it. And then I'll be able to keep my promise to see Lindy. Aye, and get my watch back. <clears throat> He's in a nasty mood, Mr. Grimsdale. Small donation will soon put that right. You'll see money talks, you know. Now, look here, Sir Hector. What is all this about? <laughs> No, it is not. Nurse Haskell has arranged for him to go into the children's ward any time he likes her there. Oh, she has, yes, has she? she has. We'll see about that. Oh, Mr. Grimsdale, please, you'll get into trouble. Children's ward, please. Oh. Send Nurse Haskell into me at once. I'm with Matron. Hey, Mr. Grimsdale, the donation. Remember, money talks. chance to explain, because... Nurse! Back to your board, at once. Come along outside, don't take all day. It's all your fault, you know, now we've both been banned. Well, well I'm sorry, Mr. Grimsdale. Oh, never mind, lad. We'll find another way of getting into the hospital, and then you can keep your promise, that little girl, eh? And then you can have your watch back. Oh. That's it. St. John's Ambulance Brigade. Brigade.
so much for the theoretical application of first aid. Now, any questions? Please, sir. Sir? Yes? Um, when do we get our uniform, sir? You can have mine. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> You get your uniform when you've passed your examination, like these other gentlemen, not before. There will now be a practical demonstration of first aid in action. Now, for this, we shall need a volunteer patient. Name? Uh, uh, Pitkin. Stand over here, Pitkin, widow. Now, I want you to imagine that Pitkin here has fallen off a very high roof. He's broken both legs, broken both arms, fractured his pelvis, and he's fractured his skull. And he's been kicked in the face by a horse. <laughs> <laughs> With iron hoofs on. <laughs> if you like. <laughs> you lie down and simulate the injuries I've described. Oh, uh, ah, ah, oh, only oh, broken legs. Oh, Simulate oh. on the table, not on the floor, where the class can see you. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, oh, Keep uh, quiet. You're unconscious. <clears throat> now, I want you to remember that first aid, when administered promptly, can save a patient's life. In the case of multiple injuries, as I've described, speed is a vital factor. Now, um, Wilkins, uh, Jones, on slips, collect them from Mr. Welsh. And uh, Redmond, Brown, bandages, collect them from Mr. Stewart. Now, prepare to advance on patient. Wait for it. Ah, ah, ah. Somebody answer the phone. Emergency, sir. What is it? Football, sir. Local cup tie. The home team have just had a penalty awarded against them. The crowd are going mad. Right. Uh, sound the alarm. Every available man on the ambulances. It'll be a good chance for you recruits to see some action. Hurry up. Put your down. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it now. Disappointed in Mr. All excitement. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
What's he doing out of bed? <laughs> Seems like a new patient, Doctor. Yeah. He appears restless. You'd better quieten him down. And then we can get him to the operating theatre. Well, with all these injuries, one hardly knows where to stick it. <coughs> Start to count. There's nothing wrong with count. me. One, the two, three, four, five, six. How many? Hike. Now start removing the bandages and say about a quarter of an hour. Yes, Doctor. Oh, now don't move. And what have you been up to? Oh, oh, it was terrible. I've been going round and round. Don't worry. The hospital can take care of you. Oh, oh. I've, I've been banned from the hospital. I've been banned. Oh, how did you get in, then? Through, through the window. Window. In the ambulance. On it. On top of it. On, on the roof. Really? But there's, there's nothing wrong with me. <laughs> no, of course there isn't. If you'll excuse me just for a moment, I'll be straight back. <laughs> Dr Meadows, please. Hello, Doctor. Nurse Radkin here. That accident case in Ward 6, he's just come round. He's... he's saying the most peculiar things, Doctor. I think you'd better come at once. Duty. There's a patient missing in the emergency ward. It's dangerous too, but uh, you know, you're going on duty or coming off? Well, uh, actually, I'm um, going on. <laughs> oh, poor you. <laughs> oh. I've got a date with Dr. Mason. He's so gorgeous. Blue eyes and a Bentley to match. Cute, don't you think? Saves time and makes one feel like a new girl. Have you got one? Um, no, um, not yet. Okay. Better get my new face ready. A face? Here, mm -hmm. darling, hand me the towel, will you? Oh, yes!
Matron, what is going on? Sir Hector, one of the men patients has gone berserk and is running amok in the hospital. Oh, this would happen, wouldn't it? In any case, Matron, whatever you do, keep him well away from the main hall. I'm going there to be interviewed by the press. Hello. Lindy, it's me. Don't you know me? Nurse? Nurse? Mr. Pitkin, why are you dressed like this? Well, see... Well, of course, I won't go all around bushes, but nobody's going to operate on me, so I had to put these on to get away. So you're the escape patient? I expect so. <laughs> Sorry I look so silly in these, but well, it was the only way I could keep my promise to see Lindy. Don't be sorry. Lindy thinks the world of you. Really? The children are very quick to sense a kind and lovable man. Oh, um, what, what, what about grown-ups? I mean, are they quick to... You realize, of course, you can't stay here like this. You remember what happened last time. Well, can't I see Lindy just for a minute? No work to do. Nurse, this is not your ward, is it? Uh, well, um, you, uh, no. Well, what are you doing here? Uh, well, you, um, well, uh, he, uh, she's just popped over from the men's ward making. <laughs> popped over. Um, I'm going to borrow. Um, uh, what's the name? You're new here, aren't you? Ah, yes. Uh, very, very new. You're on probation. Oh, uh, no, <laughs> but uh, I will be if I get caught. Extraordinary girl. What is wrong? Only one. Mm -hmm. I can't hear a word you're saying. <laughs> Number five.
I thought it was two boiled eggs, bread and butter. And a pot of tea. Report to my office immediately. Excuse me, sir, but do you think we could have a nurse to pose with you? You know, the feminine touch, it makes it much more interesting. I'm sure it does, but they're much too busy. Oh, nurse! Just one moment, dear. How would you like to have your picture taken with Sir Hector? Uh, me? Uh, I can hardly say no, can I? <laughs> Oh, uh, hello. Yeah, hold it. Please, please, not my arm. Uh, one more. Uh, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, dear? He's lost me. Shh, they'll hate me. <laughs> well, you hurt me. Well, I'm sorry. Why? Now, now, we must have one in the car. Do you mind? Uh, Thanks for driving, Chief. Uh, well, don't you think that I should, uh, I really don't think I can do this, you know. Oh, but I want to. I don't care what you want. They'll hate you. And so will I. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, dear, just one moment. May I just have your leg up there? Yes, and just over, and perhaps just... Oh, yes, yes. <coughs> Oh, you devil! <laughs> Pretty. <laughs> Thank you, dear. <laughs> Could we have just one more, please, Sir Hector? Well, really. But we would like the car round by the thermometer. Oh. So if you just drive the car round there, please, dear. Thank you. Oh, but I even... I, I can't... Come along, what are you waiting for, girl? I can't drive! You can't... She can't drive. Then take the handbrake off and we'll push you. <laughs> Oh, I, I am a silly girl. You're a daft, stupid idiot! You! If I find you near this hospital again, I personally will throw you out. In fact, I shall do it now. If I get hold of you, I'll... Get out and stay out! Really, it wasn't your fault, then? Of course not. I told him I couldn't drive. Yes, but... i would probably put the blame on your shoulders just the same. You know what these people are? They've got no sense of fair play. Oh, no. But I've got to get back to see Lindy. I promised her. In my opinion, once you got into that hospital as a patient, you ought to have stayed there. Oh, wait a minute. They was going to operate on me. Oh, I wouldn't mind if I'd had ordinary illness. Illness? Now, Pitkin, that's a very good idea. What? Supposing I were to shut you in the refrigerator... You have to be cold in there. That's just it. If you were in there for about an hour, you'd be bound to develop double pneumonia. Mr. Grimsdale, couldn't I stay in there for half an hour and just have single pneumonia? Oh, come, Pitkin, let's not spoil the ship play for the tar. Hey, besides, that little girl's lost without you. Amy, what time is it? Three o'clock, Mr. Grimsdale. Well, let me know when it's four, will you?
cry, Lindy. Mr. Pitkin did come and see you, you know, and you were asleep. He did, darling. And I'm sure you'll come again. Mr. Grimsdale, you did say at four o'clock. I was to remind you. Yes, yes, yes. But my watch has stopped. Well, wind it up, then. What time is it now? Five. Five? Well, he's been in there two hours. Ring up Dr. Carsdale and send him to come at once. Picking time's up. Oh! Good afternoon, Doctor. Good, afternoon. Good of you to come. Nothing serious, I hope. I came as quickly as I... Could? How long's it been like that? About an hour. Uh, yes, well, I, I just go and... Uh... I think he's thawed out nicely, Doctor. There we are. Let me give you a hand. Now, you won't do it yourself. Speak. Yes, right, oh. Ooh. Double pneumonia. You'd better get some dry clothes on. You'll catch a cold. Good day, gentlemen. Hey! Oh, I let you down, didn't I? You could have been more cooperative, couldn't you? I've done my very utmost to get you into that hospital. Oh, I appreciate that, Mr. Grimsdale. Oh, how can I get to see Lindsay? Well, you're obviously immune from illness. So the only way you can become a patient is to have an accident. I am not going to let them operate on me. Oh, don't be a coward. They'll use an anaesthetic. What do you say, lad, eh? Hmm? <laughs> It'll be all over like that, Vicky. All you've got to do is to throw yourself into the middle of the road. Well, I hope I don't get killed, Mr. Grimsdale. Stop fussing, Vicky. Look, there's a nice little safe one coming along now. That are one. Oh, beggars can't be choosers, you know. I guess the post, then. Not likely. You're not getting me into trouble. All we've got to do is to shut our eyes, count up to three, and then you die. One. Two. Oi! I nearly shifted my load then. Get out of it! Don't you know your highway code? Pitkin! Oh, no, Mr. Grimsdale, no, not no, that. No, of course not. I've got a very good idea, though. Huh. Well, don't you see? I've been taking terrible risks to try and get you injured. When all the time, the easy way to get in the hospital is to have a patient rather than be a patient. So all we need, then, is a patient. Yeah. And uniforms. And uniform. Oh, trust you, Pitkin, to ruin my best ideas. How many more times must I tell you? that the only way to get a uniform is to pass the St. John Ambulance Examination now. If we need a patient and uniforms, Mr. Grimsdale, it might surprise you to know that I have got an idea. I know a shortcut.
I'm sorry to disturb you, Matron. Something wrong? I'm worried about Lindy. She's very restive and running a high temperature. I'll ask Dr. Davis to look at it's her. It's not a doctor she needs. It's Mr. Pitkin. Barely does. I'm not going over all that again. But, Matron... Sir Hector has ruled that he's not to come here anymore. The subject is closed. What seems to be the trouble, Matron? Nothing, Sir Hector. But, Matron... Nurse, you may go. Sir Hector, please, won't you reconsider your banning Mr. Pitkin from the hospital? Well, I most certainly will not. But his visits to a little patient have done nothing but good. Rubbish, girl. He's done nothing but harm to the hospital. I will not tolerate his presence within a mile of this building. Oh, Pitkin. We did it. Oh, thanks for the lift, boys. I live just over the road. Don't you worry, Pitkin. I'll get you in there somehow. I'll get in, all right. I'm going into that hospital now, in this uniform. I'm just going to walk straight in. But you've been banned, Pitkin. Why don't you wait? I'm bound to have another idea soon. You'll have another idea soon. Only if it concerns getting your gold watch back. Well, I'm very proud of my watch. Ah, shut up about your watch. Yep. Don't you dare talk to me like that. I'd have you know you're still in my employ. You mean I was? I've got it, Pitkin. I've got an idea. Now, trust me, Pitkin, just once more, eh? Well, ah, well, there you are. Sunshine Ball tonight on television. Now, all you've got to do is to get in front of the camera and wave and let Lindy see you on television. You've seen them do it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> How are we going to get into the ball? Ah. St. John Ambulance Brigade Ball, and we are wearing St. John Ambulance Brigade uniforms. And how is Lindy going to find out that I'm appearing on television? Say it with flowers. Well, Mr. Pitkin sent these. Oh. They're for Lindy. Thank you, nurse. Lindy, Mr. Pitkin sent you some flowers. So you see, he hasn't forgotten you. And a note. Oh, oh, it's all right, Porter, thank you. You see, we're on duty here. You are yeah, um, fainting cases, you see, and uh, people who've had too much to drink, and uh, punch-ups, and... Round the back. It... What do you mean? Television camera, Mr. Grimsdale, over there by that table. Now, we can get round. Now, wait, Pitkin, I've been thinking. Let's forget the whole thing. It's too risky. No, Linda's watching television. I'm going to make sure she sees me. Now, look, Pitkin, listen. Oh, sorry, but suddenly I've got the most terrible headache. Oh, you poor darling. I'll ask one of those first aid men for an aspirin. Oh. All right. Have it your own way. I will. Here I go now. Excuse me. Certainly.
Good evening, viewers, and welcome to the Arlington Hotel, where we are holding a grand charity ball in aid of the Children's Sunshine Holiday Home. And now it is my very pleasant duty to introduce our guest of honor for this evening, delightful, charming, generous Lady Brinkley. What are you doing here, Lyndon? It's much too late for television. But I must watch it. I'm sorry, darling. Bed. Come on. Please, nurse. Come on. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, you will see, amongst other items of star-studded entertainment, a display. A display by our own St. John's Ambulance Brigade Band. This fine body of men, each one volunteered to train in the traditional arts of music and precision marching, just as enthusiastically as they dedicate themselves to the sick and suffering, with the same purpose in mind, <laughs> charity. Ladies and gentlemen, John! <laughs> Charity. Everything all right, Mary? Oh, yes, fine. Except that I found Lindy watching television in the nurse's pantry. She's back in bed now. Lindy's gone again, but I think I know where she is. Ladies and gentlemen, if you will kindly clear the floor, it is cabaret time. Thank you. Hey, can you come too far? Come on, let's go. Go any faster. Hey. It's a bit late for a little lady like you to be out for a walk, isn't it? I'm going to see Mr. Pitkin at the Arlington Hotel. Mm -hmm. Funny thing, we're going that way. We'll give you a lift. This young lady wishes to see a Mr. Pitkin. Well. Lindy? Lindy, you shouldn't be here. I want to see Mr. Pitkin. I know he's here and I want to see him. But Lindy, please. Take her up on the balcony, miss. You'll be out of the way up there. All right. Stand by.
in them anyway. Out of your own selfish thoughts. Well, what shall we do tonight, darling? Oh, I know the very thing. There's a dance on at the Arlington. Well, it's not a dance. It's a charity ball. In case you don't know, that's something that's being run to collect money for the new children's sunshine home. To help people who don't even know what the inside of a place like this looks like. All right. Maybe I did make one or two mistakes. But if you'd given some money in the first place, they wouldn't have been forced to have this ball. A little charity could have, could have paid for already at the seaside. And perhaps a stick of rock for all the little children like Lindy. But you don't understand about giving, do you? You only understand about enjoying yourself. Well, go on then. Everybody down. Lady Brinkley, not your bracelet. Why have I not? And your necklace, oh my dear, you're terribly kind. Your Pleasure. ring, oh my darling, oh you're sweet. Uh, too, too kind. But we, we, we must find that small person. He's marvelous. We must thank him. Lady Brinkley, I shall do so immediately. Come on, lad. Now, now, don't take it so much to heart. You've done your best. Mr. Pitkin! Oh, Lindy, Lindy. You couldn't come to see me, so I came to see you. Oh. I'm better now, Mr. Pitkin. You are, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> She's so well, she'll be leaving us soon. Thanks to you. So, you, you mean there won't be any need for us to try to get into the hospital anymore, then? my leg a bit higher, please. Can I do it?